I think this is the first time that a car and his driver both need a tune-up. Here's your spooky spot in the Jada Toys Universal Monsters, Frankenstein in the 1957 Chevrolet Suburban. No spooky collection is complete without Frankenstein. This fun combo features a detailed 124th scale 1957 Chevy Suburban diecast vehicle directly inspired by Frankenstein. Includes as well a collectible diecast Frankenstein's monster figure that measures approximately 2.75 inches in height. It also comes with a replica lobby card to bring back that nostalgic feel that will stand out in any collection good for a monster that needs to move a whole lot of his stuff. Before we get a closer look at the Jada Toys Universal Monsters, Frankenstein, and the 1957 Chevrolet Suburban. Slowly bringing in my tape measure. I didn't mean to startle somebody right away by just bringing it so abruptly. We're going to take the tape measure, and in inches from bumper to bumper, the Chevrolet Suburban stands, or lengthwise, is about seven and a half inches long. And flip that around, you're looking at the vehicle being about I would say 19. Is 19 a good safe bet? Maybe just a little bit longer, because of course the bumper sticks a little bit further out. Let's say 20. 20 centimeters in length. To be featured with Frankie, Jada Toys does include a cardboard standee, which actually looks a little more like a postcard. He's gone away on a business trip. He sent this to his one true love that he's given his heart to. Aww. No, literally, he has given her a heart. It's insurance more so to make sure that the Bride of Frankenstein sees Frankie arriving home and he doesn't veer too far off. The postcard in this case actually does have Frankenstein looking off to the side. Guilt, perhaps, sitting on those shoulders of yours, Frankenstein? He's looking off, I don't know at what, but you can see there's some lightning bolts behind him. A nice little touch that they've also done is they've outlined the monster's head and shoulders, and then inside of that is the lab room. You can see there's Frankenstein down below that, a monster science created but could not destroy. But a marriage certainly could destroy him. Make sure you're coming home after your business trip, Frankie. On the back, though, this does actually flip out, so it does serve as certainly a cardboard standee. It's literally doing exactly what it was designed to do. And when it comes to displaying this, certainly after this review, this is going to go along with Frankenstein and his ride. As for before we actually get to his ride, one other thing the figure also comes included with before we actually... I suppose we should probably look at Frankenstein, then his ride, but before that, he also comes included with a plastic stand. Now, you saw at the beginning of this review, just... To, unsandwich this right now this was the bottom of it that sat underneath the cardboard so you would have to have unscrewed these to remove this from the bottom and then that attached to the top that actually does have the peg holes that then frankenstein sits on top of i hope i didn't make that all too too confusing to understand but the only thing about it though is don't lose this bottom piece because if you were just to use this as a stand for Frankenstein to stand on it's actually like one of those training things those balancing boards I can never balance properly on those but those exercise boards that you kind of wobble back and forth yeah there's no way that you'd be able to put Frankenstein on it it would just wobble back and forth way too much so what I would certainly say just before you recycle your packaging take this bottom disc off and then if you take then the holes where the screw holes would have gone into line them back up to the holes that were attached and sandwich this together you've actually got yourself a pretty serviceable looking stand I might actually do one better and just glue those together because I'd like the idea of actually having my figures on these little standees I've done them with all the other Jada Toys figures that we've looked at before. The Jada Toys vehicles that have come included with these little miniature metal figures, I've always kept these display stands and basically I've always glued them together. So I've got myself a little standee. Not that Frankenstein really needs the lift anyways, because he does have, of course, the heightened boots, the lifted boots on the bottoms of his feet. Getting a closer look at Frankenstein's monster. Not a bad looking. I mean, it doesn't have any likeness whatsoever of Boris Karloff, but I got to say it still gets the job done. I don't know what exactly his hands are out for. The only guess I really have is when he eventually gets home and he's taking the missus out for the ride. You can obviously open up the side door and maybe you can actually display Frankenstein holding the door open for Mrs. Frankenstein, Frankenstein's 
I guess the Bride of Frankenstein. You just have him actually holding the door like this. That's the gentleman thing to do. Not even if you just have someone in your life, but just anybody that's coming into your door, into your car. It's always nice to kind of hold the passenger side open. Let them get inside. That's the nice thing to do, at least. The polite thing to do, at least. But yeah, he doesn't have any posability on him whatsoever. I mean, his hands, funny enough, are rubbery, but all the rest of the figure is all die-cast metal. And again, what little there is of paint, being the rest of his body is all done in black, it does do a believable enough job, an acceptable enough job of giving us a Frankenstein's monster. They've got the little bolts there painted on the side of his neck, little staples on the sides of his face, a couple of little staples there also on the front of his head there as well. Yeah, not a bad-looking Frankenstein. I mean, obviously, being that he's all metal, there's no way... You could bend this if you want and completely destroy it if you wanted to, but there's no way he's going to be sitting inside that car. He's actually more to be displayed outside of it. Or again, if he wants to be the gentleman, he could hold the door for the missus as she gets inside. Let's just put him right over there in the meantime. As for the vehicle itself, for obvious reasons, it does roll as it does have four tires, four functioning tires. The tires themselves are actually rubber, so you could remove the tires from the plastic rims. I've now peeled a little bit of that. I just want to make sure that's completely fixed. But yeah, it does roll pretty good. It does roll pretty good. It's kept to a gray scale, so it matches his silver screen counterpart. The thing about it, though, is they chose, I think, first of all, a good manufacturer. Chevy, I think, is the, is the way to go with the Universal Monster. I don't know if I would have settled on necessarily a 1957 Suburban. I think for Frankenstein, I always kind of consider him as a worker. I would have given him something maybe closer to like, I don't know, a Chevrolet Chevy 5 pickup truck. Something that doesn't actually have the canopy like this and completely just a flatbed truck. Now, maybe Frankenstein has put away his tools and now has settled down with a missus and a few kids that maybe he has to think of think of a little bit more of a bigger vehicle that can actually house more than him and just the woman on the side there. Now, of course, like I said, the, the, the car doors do open up. The doors themselves are die cast. The inside, though, is all done in plastic. It's not really much in the way of paint neither on the sides of the doors or actually any of the interior is painted in any other color than just the molded black plastic. You have to be really careful of these side windows though. They're barely attached. Uh, and being that they're also plastic, there's really, I guess I could probably, I don't want to push it in too far. I do think it needs a little bit of glue. If I could be honest, like these do move around. I don't certainly want to have any one of these falling off, but you can see really how loose these side windows are. They're side mirrors. So just be careful of that. There is, by the way, no windows on these. The doors are completely open with the windows rolled down. And actually, back in the day, all the windows would have had to involve you cranking them like this. Pushing a button to have the windows automatically come down didn't exist back then. Sorry to break that to anybody. But yeah, both the doors do open. Uh, they work the exact same way. And then on the other side, of course, being the driver's side, you can get the chance to see now a steering wheel. Steering wheel's a little on the warp side. I don't know why it's bent to the side like this. But again, you've got like the odometer in there. There's, it looks like a radio. Maybe Frankenstein's listening to some tunes while he's driving along the streets. But again, like these little side windows. Actually, you know what? This one's not as bad as the passenger side. Yeah, still be careful though. Now, other things that do also open up on the vehicle, the front of the hood does open, revealing inside a sort of bluish silver tinted uh, motor. You can see the motor on the inside of there. Uh, the rest of it, again, is all just molded plastic on the sides. And even like the motor itself is also plastic. You've got a nice chrome grill on the front of the car. Chrome bumper also there as well. And some uh, off kind of clear colored plastic headlights on both the sides. Other things that also open are the back of the vehicle. So you can open up both the flap down, the drop down on the back of the canopy here. And then, of course, you can also open this too. This is plastic. The inside is plastic, but this is metal. And of course, the top of this is also metal here as well. And of course, you've got some finer features also added to the truck too. Like you've got Frankenstein's monster printed on both the sides, right there and right there. And they've also printed not only Frankenstein's monster on the back, but down below also, they put Frankenstein as the license plate. You'll notice nowhere on here, for anybody that argues the point, it doesn't say Frankenstein's monster. It only says Frankenstein. Unless some would speculate that this is Victor Frankenstein's car, I'm willing to lean more to the idea that this is actually the monster's car. You can also see by it too that this is the monster's car by the fact he has a big honking image of him done in black and white on the top of the hood. One part I think I would have also changed to this is while I do like the idea that they've actually put his face so you know right away whose car this is, I think I probably would have instead removed it here and rather put it back here. 
maybe done away completely with having Frankenstein there. And instead, like the old 70s vans, where, you know, those old 70s vans, they would always airbrush on, like spray paint on, howling wolves, lightning bolts, flying eagles, all that stuff. Some of you may actually have even grown up with one of those vans in your family, or maybe an uncle, I don't know, somebody who was driving. I had actually a relative that used to drive around in a souped up car like that, that actually had spray painted on howling wolves. And anyways, that's a story for, for another day. I would have taken honestly the Frankenstein's monster portrait from here. And rather I would have actually put it on the side, kind of like those old, I guess now they're classic. Some would, now some would say they've never really been classic, but like those old 70s vans, I would have put Frankenstein's monster right there. I like this. I like the lightning that they've actually added, the electricity done here in silver, but I've also just added and finished that with the Frankenstein's face here. What I've done instead of actually having it here on the, on the hood, what I think what they should have done instead is actually had the lightning rods, little rods on both angles, maybe even have it parallel to the side of the hood. I think that would have worked quite nice. And actually what they could done, done too is have the lightning bolt, the electricity coming from the rods, coming all the way down the side and then now stretching across the side of the vehicle. That's the only other thing I would have done. I mean, it's a nice looking vehicle. And like I said, it does roll really nice. But again, I think I would have probably leaned more to the idea of giving him like a, like a Chevy pickup truck, not necessarily a Suburban. It's a nice looking colored car, keeping still to the gray, gray scale, that black and white color scheme. But I don't know, again, like maybe Frankenstein's now settled down. His days of throwing children into the water are long gone. And now he just wants to settle down with the missus and actually have, and raise a family. And actually just one other thing too, the seat, the car itself, just to open up the doors. There's two seats, obviously in the front. You may or may not actually be able to see it, but there's a second set of seats behind it. So there's four, but then if you also open up the back, there's another two seats behind that. At least it seems like there's two seats. So this, this actually, the Suburban holds a family of six, whether Frankenstein wants to settle down and start thinking about that many children. He better though, because Bride of Frankenstein's getting a little too impatient with all of Frankie's business trips. boy, Frank. boy. As Frankenstein's monster does hold the door open for the missus to get inside, we can have one final look at the 1957 Chevrolet Suburban. You know, again, I still wish that they could have chosen a different vehicle, still sticking though with a Chevy, maybe a 1948 Chevrolet five window pickup truck. That's what I would have gone with. Doesn't have to necessarily be a 48, could have even been a 1950, but a five window pickup truck. And then it says Chevy five, Chevy five window pickup truck. Probably would have think the route I would have gone with necessarily when it comes to uh, Frankenstein's monster, but maybe, yeah. I mean, Frankenstein now has decided to settle down. His days of, again, like terrorizing villagers and having them chase after him with torches, that's gone. Frankenstein's getting a little older. Those joints don't work as well as they did. So Frankenstein wants to take things easy and enjoy what's left of his life. Then maybe he's decided to upgrade, going from a pickup truck now to a Suburban, so at least he can house the missus and all the rest of his kids. I don't know how many kids Bride of Frankenstein actually wants, but Frankenstein better get himself another job because you can't just be terrorizing people. That don't bring in the money. Bride of Frankenstein wants a little more of that moolah. Nice though looking vehicle, uh, still again, a couple of little touches I would have probably done still sticking with this vehicle is moving completely Frankenstein's face from the front of the hood. I think it's an eyesore myself. I would have rather put them on the back of the vehicle and maybe kept the front of the hood to have the lightning rods, those little electric rods that he has in the lab. Then you could have then justified why the electricity is running out the, running the side of the vehicle. Those of all come, could have come from the front of the rods. That's what I would have done. Jada Toys decided instead to have actually the face on the front. I'm not a big fan of it, but I do like the look of the vehicle nonetheless. What do you guys think, though, of the Jada Toys Universal Monsters Frankenstein in the 1957 Chevy Suburban? And would you have chosen a different vehicle for Frankenstein's monsters than the one that Jada Toys did choose? And if you did want to choose a different one, which vehicle would you have picked for Frankenstein's monster? Let me know down below in the comment section. And certainly as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit it with a spooky like. Doesn't have to necessarily be as spooky, but, and also as well, if you enjoy the content and you want to stick around for more, because we are going to be looking at some more spooky stuff, looking at the rest of this month, of course, for the rest of October, we've still got a couple of more weeks. If I'm looking at the calendar correctly, granted the calendar I'm looking at right now is a 2018 calendar, but it works the same way. There's still somewhat the same amount of days and I've still been marking off the days, although I don't, I don't think it's this. I don't think it's the right day, but I've been marking off. We still got a couple of weeks left. So if you are enjoying the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, turning on the bell notification and coming back because there will be some more spooky reviews coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.